could always just blame the Russians. Okay, so we are back in, and we are encoding frames. The stream is live again, I think. Perfect. Yes. So, yeah, stream, if you can hear me and everything's okay, please type things in the in the in the delay but if if not please please continue your thought desk <laughs> so one of the things that you know i like i like the idea of making it more burner style and having more difficult skill based encounters instead of just like warp in blap a industrial warp out um the things that I'm cautious about are number one, I don't know that trying to teach PvP skills in those kind of missions is going to work because anybody who can run level fours or is an active PvP in the war zone is going to be able to cakewalk those regardless. Um, and I don't think that people who are going to be running faction warfare missions just for the ISK is going to be ever going to apply those skills in terms of PvP in the war zone. There's, there's a big disconnect between people who go into faction warfare to make the ISK and make the LP versus people who are going into faction warfare for the PvP aspects of the game and enjoying the the, the PvE aspects as a way to sustain that. Um, you can make it harder, but that's still going to be you know, solved within the first month. Um, and you also have to make sure that whatever shifts and fits you require for those missions, you can take that same shift through a number of different missions if you're going to have the same uh, travel system where those missions are spawning in other areas. So here's an idea. What if you incentivize the enemy faction to defend against a mission? What if you could do like some kind of timer that the enemy player can warp into the mission site, and if the enemy player you know actually sits there for enough time, like five to ten minutes or whatever, it basically gives them the payout the same as a loyal as a as a novice outpost or something. Yeah, like that's that. not the, the problem. Is that, you can game it? Yeah, I mean that just sounds like plexus. I mean what you described there was well, uh, in, well, yeah, spawning the, the of plexus. Original, the original player would still do and do his mission. So if there was no enemy resistance, then he would just complete his mission in three to four minutes like we've been talking about. Basically, there's no reason for a dude to, to kill a player inside of an actual warfare mission. It's not, first of all, it's too difficult, usually. And second of all, there's just no reason to, to check plexes. So there's no check mission plexes. So there's just a huge amount of mission sites all over the place that are abandoned and empty because... Either the faction warfare player got bored and didn't complete their mission sequence, or that somebody was, you know, in the so they didn't need to go inside. So it would cause the yeah. player to, to fail the mission, basically, if they got get captured by the opposite side. I mean, I, I would, w um, what if um, the the mission was more like you could see who's running a mission, like it would ping something on the map, like you know, a player. Uh, Player under this mission, and then then make it like more visible to the you know to that's the constellation. Or that's good too. Like pings everywhere, though. Yeah, well, that's problem, you'd have too many pings. And number two, there's a lot of times where a guy will run around with a faction warfare alt in a shuttle, just opening up missions, and then run it with his PvP main, who happens to be a pirate or MPL or wherever. Um, because it's not just the faction warfare folks that are running these missions. A lot of neutrals and a lot of people who are not based in faction warfare, also tend to use it as an ATM, for lack of a better term. Right, um, but, 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 that, but that's know, easily so, that's easily solvable because you know, just same thing with plexes. You can't like you you have to be in the faction to complete that plex. So you know, th th there I mean, there there are solutions to make it uh, where so the uh, system couldn't be gamed like that. And you make them harder. You make them. You make it. You know. Uh, whether you increase the payouts of the mission and you reduce the number of missions pe uh, people can get at it at one time, I mean, there, there's ways that you can tweak it to where the, you know it would actually you know uh, be encouraging PvP. And if there is no PvP and you complete it, you know the, the payout could be more or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think that the the main issues with uh, the faction warfare missions are the two easy and three out of the four factions. Um, pay out way too much at higher tiers, so you need to disconnect it from the tier system entirely. And after that, I think that there's a lot of different ways to go. Um, I don't know that you can artificially restrict the number of missions you get, but yeah. So just to say something that CCP Affinity mentioned in FanFest, maybe we should just delete the tier system. Is there, any, yeah. is there any upside to the tier system? Yeah, no, I would love it. I would love to see the tier system to go away and the um, and actually, to, to make the war zone affect. Now, I've brought this up many times. Make the actually what we do in the war zone affect the uh, the other parts of empire. Uh, that is my dream for faction warfare. Um, like one problem with the missions is like in a healthy war zone, there's like they're not that overpowered. But in the case of like Mimitar versus Samar, there's like 
pretty much no MR left, so you can the farming, the crabbing is like running rampant at the moment, no one's stopping them. Yeah, for anybody too, I want to recommend people to go to Gorski's stream and have a look. At, when was it like two days ago you did the you did the missions thing, right? Yeah, I streamed a 14 mission cycle today, like no delay on the stream and anything. I didn't get interrupted a single time. That would not happen. Like multiple times. Space. <laughs> Yeah, if anybody's curious about about why you know what how the current mission system works and sort of the problems, uh, the payouts for it, you should check out Gorski's stream. That was a really good example of it, uh, actually. Uh, how about we move on from missions and start talking about PvP uh, LP rewards? I mean, one of the issues that's been brought up for a long time now is how to tackle the issue of actually rewarding. PvP itself, rather than the other things around, them, like flexing and uh, and doing missions, uh, making it so that that the, the PvP maybe doesn't give you as much LP, but at least something. I mean, currently it's a joke. Uh, what do people think about some ways to tackle that? Is that like CCP have recently said that they're thinking of uh, putting it at max, like tier five, would be equivalent of tier five always. Uh, is that enough? Do we have any ideas of how that can be solved without... I mean, obviously, the main problem with that is that it can be gained, right? Uh, so how do you duck that problem but still reward uh, reward PvP uh, with LP? Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Well, I definitely think you tie it to uh, Tier 5 rewards. Well, I mean, it, it all depends. I mean, in any system that they come up with can be, be gamed to, to an extent. Uh, and I mean, this is really a design question of how, uh, how not, not to game it, whether you do something where, you know, you get, you know, um, PvP outside of, of Plexes, you know, gives you one, one payout and it's lower. PvP inside of Plexes is higher. But again, something like that can be gamed. Um, there, there's nothing off the top of my head that think that it, it can't be gamed. But I think it should be more than it currently uh, it currently is because it's 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 basically nothing. You you just get an all it is is a notification that you got you, you killed somebody and that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to have an even if CCP did increase it to tier five, and they've said in, in a couple of fan fests now that that's about the max it can really allow in order to prevent it from being completely gamed through market manipulation, right. everything else, gurgoons. But you know, it's always going to be a nice to have. You're never going to be able to live off of that unless you're killing tons of shiny stuff with no losses and nine times out of ten you're going to be able to get more risk more lp through things like flexing and missions than you ever are going to be to pvp it's a nice to have it's a nice little bonus but it's never going to be a main income stream for anybody yeah so that could be one of the features of deleting the tier system is simply setting the pvp rewards to the level five tier payout and then setting the mission rewards to level two tier payout or something similar to that. That way, normalize the spectrum a little bit instead of having like 100,000 loyalty points for doing a three minute plex where you shoot a single NPC and then getting 100 loyalty points for killing a Garmer with you know, a couple dudes. So <laughs> that would probably be a little bit better spectrum of you know, reward and risk. Right, yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything else to say on that issue or moving yeah, yeah. on? Like, if, if only people didn't game the system, it could be so good. <laughs> well, well yeah, but this is the game. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Sure, so you can't. Basically, the only way you can make it not a, a system that you can game is to make it not a game. And that's the only way that you can do it. So, uh, unfortunately, EVE Online is a game, and people will find a way to exploit or manipulate the system. Just like, you know, regular people will try to exploit regulations in the federal government or the tax code, you know, or anything like that. So it's just the same thing in real life, really. Right, right. Okay, moving on. One of the things that's been brought up for a long time now, I mean, a couple of years at least, uh, has been the ability of, of uh, faction warfare uh, corporations to uh, tax their members, uh, tax their LP income of their members so they can fund uh, large operations, perhaps SRPs and that kind of thing. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on LP tax? Is it a feasible idea? Uh, is it something we're not interested in? You know, what can it be used for? What, what are the pros and cons of it? I think this was this was brought up earlier. I mean, it would it would be it would, it's a nice it's a nice to have or, or something that's we should attain for. But until they re rewrite like the the some of the backends for like LP payouts and 
uh, for, for missions and stuff like that. I don't think we're going to see a blanketed LP tax. Um, yeah, but my main point is, is this something we want? I mean, in the future, it's assuming though the code would be there. Is it something we would like CCP to work on? Is it something, uh, is it I mean, the how, way how, to go? My question for always has been about LP taxes. How would a corporation use that? Would 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 they would we have this? Uh, would the would a, a director or somebody with roles in the corporation be able to turn in those LP at the store, or would this be something that where you pay out members uh, from that LP pool, which is now a separate wallet system? Um, and and so so the it's never been answered to me like how how would how would we actually distribute this? And it's probably a, a, a ton of work to whatever system that's come up with. Um, I have a sort of a, a counter, uh, not to get off topic here, but it's, it's sort of related to a counter question. Is there another way to, 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 to tax this exact same thing within the, exa in the, same, in the system that we currently have today? Well, I guess you could run like 100% tax or something. Get the mission. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I mean or, or you could do, do something like, you know, every time uh, a member in the corp uh, spends LP, they, the, the they pay uh, X amount of uh, ISK value of that or whatever or something like that. I mean, there's a sort of, there's a sort of same, I get, what I'm saying is that there's probably um, uh, different ways of doing it than a straight LP tax. That might, that might work and it might be easier to implement from a code design standpoint, but talking with, uh, with CCP during some of the, during like FanFest 2014, the LP turn-ins that you do are actually missions that are instantly completed. So I'm not entirely sure how CCP would code that in terms of like adding 20% to the ISK cost of turning in LP and having that go to the corporation, for example. Um, right. But assuming that that back end kind of gets gets fixed, either taxing the LP or having some sort of LP to ISK conversion um, would give the different faction more for corporations some sort of wallet that they could actually learn, you know, use for things like SRP funding, jump freighted services, doing whatever kind of normal support that you were able to do as a corporation right. that gets a lot of its uh, income from ISK because you don't make much in terms of ISK itself in Faction Warfare. It's all LP. You're not spending right. time ratting. You're not spending time killing things with bounties. It, you don't get much actual hard ISK coming into the system. If they, if they deleted the entire loyalty point store and turned it into an actual game feature instead of a, you know, weirdly coded workaround that was invented in 2007, then you could probably make it actually a useful system and have it actually, you know, program neatly. And not to mention, that, like Risk said, you could probably is have a translation of LP to ISK ratio from a 30-day running average of all of the market values for that loyalty point stores items. It'd be pretty simple to do that across the EVE, you know, the EVE market database. So that, that seems logical to me. Right, yeah. So, yeah, this is, I mean, it's one of the points I've been discussing back and forth. I realize it can be difficult to implement right now, but for me, at least, it's one of those pie-in-the-sky things that I would like to see happen because I want people in Faction Warfare, I mean, FCs, enablers of all kinds, to be able to have some kind of income coming in so they can uh, they can arrange events, they can arrange fleets, they can get shit happening, you know. It, it's got to be a good thing. Of course, you don't have to tax. Nobody has to do this. But for a lot of organizations in Faction Warfare, I think, I think it would be very, very useful. But speaking of LP and the store, uh, it's, it's kind of shit right now, isn't it? I mean, the whole system is kind of shit. Uh, I thought Gorski brought up some interesting points when he was discussing the LP store in his article. Uh, Gorski, you want to bring those up real quick, how you would like to see the LP store rework? Uh, yeah, sure. Like it's one of the things I brought up when I was on CSM that I would like to see the entire LP store, like the UI basically reworked firstly. Like you could make it something similar to the market or something that shows ISK per LP or some stuff like that. And uh, I'm parents of a lot of like high sec mission run and stuff. Like they just, they never spend their LP. They have like a million LP they're just sitting on them. It's like lost income. I don't know why they changed it because the the thing like the entire LP store is some kind of confusing. There's um, certain items that have negative ISK per LP uh, like conversions. So if you do them, you lose ISK converting them because like you have to have multiple tags and shit like that. That that's honestly, I feel it's very legacy code. Like I wouldn't want to see the tags for the LP store commercials at all, because it's just yeah, confusing. Yeah. All of them removed from game. That's deleted. Yeah. That'd be lovely. <laughs> or or just make them actually deleted and reseed them in the NPCs in a logical manner that doesn't have like a million admiral tags, no, but the no. one 
Or kernel tag is like five times as valuable. Or, so. or if or if we have to have tags have four have four sizes, you know, or or, 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 or sorry, three three or five sizes. Like make it make something logical. Like each each of the different um, uh, ship class, like frigate, destroyer, uh, you know, cruiser, battle cruiser, battleship drops an individual tag, or that you know, there's a you know, there's three sizes: small, medium, and large, and, and leave it at that. Exactly. Something. Anything would be better than now. <laughs> is basically what we're saying. Either deleting it completely, or deleting it and then remaking it, or uh, doing something that is less maddening than it currently is. Yeah, quite. Uh, now, of course, yeah, so, left, but but oh, so, sorry, well, sorry. Go on. Yeah, while well, he's away, I'll I'll pick up what he's saying. I would actually like uh, he mentioned like he would like to see an LP store something similar to the market that shows the conversion. I would just more like it more like the next where you you basically get, you go in out of it. It has your it has your LP balance and then you you're just buying stuff. Your LP and is about um and you're just buying stuff out of it like that and it just it just shows up. You can redeem it and works through that sort of that system. That would be kind of nice. Mm -hmm. The redemption system would be kind of difficult though because then you could just fly your. You know, fly your altar, fucking jump clone to wherever you want to be, wherever that you know, jump clone back to Jita, redeem it in Jita, jump clone back to the faction, you know, back into the faction workflows. So like, there's no transportation issues and that sort of issue. But I do like right. the idea of kind of a next sort of store where the where the currency is LP as opposed to Orum, um, where you don't have to worry about you know turning in all these extra tags, turning in these ISK. If you look at the uh, you know some blueprints and stuff like that, you can either buy for ISK plus LP. Or turn in a ship plus LP, or, or turn in like hacks plus LP. Just make it all just like you're turning in LP for an item or for a blueprint, and call it good. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah that's that, that, those blueprints are Fozzie's weird. Like you know, oh, the player has to make a trade-off decision. You know, because one has a better value than the other. Actually, it's it's yeah, actually quite nice to have the blueprint. Hey, welcome back. Is that you can get the blueprint, then transfer the blueprint to like Blade Runner or something, and then manufacture it in a separate location. So that's what I've been doing for a lot of our ships inside the other system. So it makes a lot more sense for people that need to live in low sec than people that are just spamming the loyalty point button as we used to have to do inside high sec. Yeah, I mean, an interesting point that Gorski also brought up, uh, which I agree with wholeheartedly, and what we've been talking about here is that lots of new people that come into faction warfare uh, ask, what the hell do I do with all these LP? And then and, and the system for picking the right items, as Gorski was mentioning, some of them are even negative isk. And when you sell them, it's very convoluted, it's very, very complicated. And streamlining the store itself, just making it easier to understand would go a long way I mean without actually redesigning the whole system that much just effectivizing it and and um, updating the UI making it easier to understand uh, would help a lot of new players coming into faction warfare and trying to make a living of uh, living in faction warfare space yeah uh, speaking of speaking of newbies uh, another problem that a lot of new players have run into is that you lose uh, you lose a lot of your sex status when you're fighting in faction warfare uh, for various reasons. People coming, uh, neutrals coming to your plex, for example. Uh, people have suggested all kinds of solutions there, like for example that uh, when a person comes into a plex, they automatically get a, a suspect status, so you don't have to have a loss when you the first firing. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, what other solutions? Uh, do you think we need solutions? There is the the sex status hits, are they a problem in Faction Warfare Space? I agree that they're a problem, and I think Gorski can talk about it more. He, he posted on Crossing Zebras about it, how you can get a suspect timer activated on the player that activates the acceleration gate, so that when they go into the plex, they'll actually get a suspect timer, so they can be engaged without the player losing 1.0 security status per day of PvPing on Faction Warfare. That's, that's basically the rate of speed that it drops. If you actually PvP in a serious way, in faction warfare in low sec plexes sometimes because pirates will always come in and the pirates are always like negative 2.0 and you can't kill them without losing sex status so it's very irritating <laughs> uh yeah i totally agree like um this should be like a thing they've done like a long time ago and i think they want to do that as well it, right like then, yeah go ahead. fucks up sex status for like new guys who want to join the faction warfare like still be able to go into high sec to buy new ships and they can't do it because some they shot some pirate first yeah, and there's a couple other issues to go along with that. Um, you know, Thantos Marathon uh, actually brought up a really good point on the TweetFleet Slack about uh, how the default 
overview settings, put it so that you know your militia and your corporation and stuff like that are generally below things like your security status. And since most of us who have been in faction warfare for more than a day or two are dirty, dirty pirates with minus 9.0 security standing or worse, um, we end up getting shot by you know fellow militia members who simply have not dealt with the, the the default overview. So I think that there's definitely things where you could do where putting militia above uh, security status and things like that would make it a lot easier for people not to make mistakes on accident. Um, AWOC's does happen, though. Yeah, AWOC's that. does happening. Absolutely, absolutely. But the other thing is that because of the allied militia mechanic, if a Mimitar pilot comes to Galente space, like, I don't know, Gorski Carr, um, he's going to show up as an ally. He's going to show up as an alliance member, even though he's in Mimitar militia as opposed to Galente militia. And since a Mimitar militia pilot can shoot on a Galente militia pilot without any faction st status loss, without any uh, security status loss, that means that he can gank me completely out of the blue, and I don't see it coming unless I like click show info on him and realize he's Mimitar. Some other things uh, about standings that are an issue are the fact that if you end up shooting or doing an ECE war on your fellow militia members, you lose standings like wicked fast. And that's hugely an issue because of things like ECM smart bombs, uh, and even in NullSec, things like uh, anchored bubbles or bubbles off of interdictors or hictors count as aggressive acts. You still lose the standings even though you haven't actually damaged anybody. Um, mm -hmm. And it actually re renders a lot of things very unviable. Uh, as faction warfare members, it's incredibly hard to roam in NullSec, because if you pop a bubble and a couple of your militia guys are in there, all of a sudden you've lost a massive amount of standings. You can't, you know, the Kaldari, I feel so bad for them because they can't smart bomb off our drones all the time and we just swarm them. But they can't <laughs> activate the smart bombs without like hitting 30 of their fleet mates and going from 10.0 Kaldari standings to like negative 10.0 Kaldari standings. Getting you know? their corp kicked. Exactly, getting yeah, their exactly. corp kicked and everything it's else. A it's huge. It's, it's a major issue and I don't know how CCP can fix it. But doing yeah. those... Those things are things that definitely have to be taken a look at in order for faction warfare to be able to expand more than just you know pilot on pilot. You know, being able to get in some of the AOE weapons, being able to do some of the more null sex stuff, which is going to be important in five stuff because we want to fuck with other people too. Um, but you got to be able to make sure that those standing hits aren't so massively punitive. Right. right. They could so, just uh, the, you know, delete the fast standing hits, but yeah, go ahead. So. To this point, the AOE weapons, uh, like the smart bombs and bubbles, I was listening to uh, Jumping Through War just today, and uh, lots of interesting discussions on that topic. And one of the solutions I think was suggested by Veronica uh, Isagar was that sort of a way around getting the uh, status or the st uh, standings hit would be to, uh, when you're in the fleet, uh, you don't get the standing sit, so that or that the FC is able to to uh, switch that on, so that members of the same fleet. If you say you're smart bombing, for example, and you you happen to hit a bunch of your friends, uh, they don't get a standing sit as long as you're on the same fleet. That's a, a possible solution. Uh, the other idea was to remove uh, the standings completely, so that there are no uh, no standing sits whatsoever. What do you guys I'm think not about, sure that? about that one? Like it's gonna yeah, be a piece of shit. Like, I'm I already agree. flying in Galente space. <laughs> That's Mimitar, like, killing stuff, so yeah, I don't know. It's gonna open up the AWOXs everywhere. Yeah, but surely, That's, uh, that's probably the problem, in, yeah. Turning it off, uh, being able to switch it off uh, uh, standing sets when, when in the same fleet addresses a lot of those issues, does it not? It does. Um, actually, I think that would solve quite a bit of it. Um, I also think that two other major changes I think should really be put in place are number one, like no standings hit in alliance or corporation. You should be able to set that as an alliance or corporation setting, just like you can set, you can set uh, PVP ability. If you've yeah. opted as a corporation or alliance to allow uh, court member on court member or alliance member on alliance member PVP, there should be no standings hit that goes along with that. Number two, I think that there definitely needs to be a separate overview setting for militia versus alliance and corporation. I think that's going to go a long way to making sure that you can say, okay, he's in my militia and have that as a different color tag as opposed to he's actually in my corporation, he's in my alliance. And that could actually help quite a bit with the AWOX issue. Right, right. For sure, yeah. Leave it up to players to deal with AWOXing instead of game mechanics, which is the way it's currently done. So, 
Yeah, there was another point that they brought up on uh, Dubbing Through War. Uh, I'm not really sure about that, but at least I believe in the, in the fleet solution there. So, uh, moving on, this is kind of a big one, and everybody has opinions on it. Plex design and the issues of those. And farmers, I mean, everybody has their own idea of what farmers are, what kind of role they play in our game, and, and how that uh, problem should, should be solved or should be solved. Uh, what kind of ideas do you guys have about the Plex system uh, and the way, uh, I mean, the way farmers currently exist today and the the the, uh, the changes that CCP have made to address the issue? Do you believe it's enough? Do you be, believe it should be something else? Is the Plex system working as intended? Do we need other Plex sizes? How would you change it? Um, so the main thing about Plexus is that, you know, you can run in with a frigate and defensive Plex with almost no penalty at all because there's no NPC fire on you. You could fly any ship you want. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but for offensive Plexus, you actually need a ship to kill the NPC effectively. So most people fly like high DPS catalysts or other destroyers with workhorse steps, no less slots. So just roll around in your destroyer, kill the NPC, and sit there for 10 minutes. The NPC responds occasionally, you kill it again. If any warp, anybody warps in, you will just warp out and then cloak. And then you come back when the player gets bored and leaves. Uh, they need to have a timer rollback feature, which has been discussed at FanFest before, but basically if the enemy player comes in and kills you, and then sits in the plex, it rolls all the offensive plexer's progress down to zero very quickly, so they can begin defensive plexing without like 19 minutes of sitting around, it's only 10 minutes of sitting around. So I think that would be much more effective of a system. And it would penalize mostly the Care Bears that roll around in Warp Core Stabbed Catalysts, <laughs> as we've killed and, several uh, last time. And I think part of the part of the, and it all depends on who you talk to, part of the, the reason of the farmers, and, and I think this this is more exaggerated in the Kaldari and Galente war zone, is because the war zone is so, so large. We have 101 systems, uh, and, you know, not all of those systems are occupied, and we're we're so spread out. So the the farmers sort of like like um, you know sw switch sides depending on who you know who has the the most quiet systems. You know the the larger control that has quiet systems will run. And so I think I think sort of the the not necessarily like the the plexes and 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 sort of the mechanics how they're, they're set up uh, now are are necessarily like contributing to like. Um, uh, the the farmers it's it's more like the the spread out and non concentrate non concentration of activity and to to me that I think that that's a bigger problem rather than uh, the farmers themselves and and adjusting that's anything true. with the, the the current plexing system. Yeah, the the so, topography of the landscape is so large that you just sort of find your little cubby hole to hide away in, then you just do plexes there for 15 hours, and then you log off again. It's almost impossible to deal with that. So. Right, I mean, I, I, I would love the idea of a, of a shrinking and changing war zone where, like, if, if you know, you've, you've basically captured and held, held the system and the, you know, there's, there's, like, no PvP or, like, real activity in those systems, those basically don't spawn plexes anymore. And so it sort of shrinks the war zone, sort of makes everybody uh, move towards, like, you know, you know, either either you know expanding that war zone or, or capturing your or, or pushing back or capturing more and sort of concentrates everybody towards one at one area. So, if I could take a minute and kind of give an overview of the Plex system for those people who don't understand uh, how that works. Um, essentially, every system in Faction Warfare Space has a three thousand point kind of a uh, slider. Okay. And there are plexes that spawn. These are in-space beacons that you can warp to through your probe scanner um, that spawn on a regular basis. Uh, it requires anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes to complete. Um, they are gated. At least three out of the four are gated. Um, the novices can only allow Tech 1 frigates. The smalls allow Tech 1 and 2 frigates and destroyers. The uh, mediums do allow up to Tech 2 cruisers. And larges are ungated. And you can bring anything in there that you want. So you roll in, you kill the enemy NPC, you sit there, you run down the timer, you've captured that, you gain 20 points. You need 3,000 points to capture the system, okay? So the, the issues that come around with plexes involve, number one, its impact on the control of the system, and number two, the income that you get from actually running a plex, because each plex will give you a certain amount of LP for completing it, either offensively when you're running at somebody from the opposite faction, or defensively at a lesser payout. So some of the issues that come up are, number one, a lot of people will end up running these plexes offensively just to gain the LP. And that kind of goes back to the whole PvP-oriented players in faction warfare versus PvP-oriented faction 
uh, faction warfare players. But since it has an impact on the control of the system, the PvP players who are living in low sec and living in the faction warfare zone end up having to undo that work in order to bring that back to stability or at least prevent it from creeping up so high towards vulnerability that somebody else could flip it quickly. Um, so those are sort of the major issues around plexing that that causes so much angst because the guy that's just in it for the money is actually impacting the ability of the PvPers who live there to secure their space and stay in the station. Because if you lose the system, you're no longer able to dock in that station. All of your assets are in there. It's hard to get it out. Uh, and it changes. It, it actually impacts your ability to affect the rest of the war zone. We'll kind of get that in, into that a little bit in the next piece about war zone control and occupants and warfare. But for now, it's kind of a little bit of an overview. Right. Right, yeah. So, I mean, all kind of every, every model everybody I've spoken to concerning faction warfare has some kind of idea how to stave off farming. Uh, and I suppose the most elegant idea I've ever heard is, is just a negative damage to modify on Bob Cost tabs. Now, I know some people don't agree with that, but you guys have some, really quick, you have some ideas on, or would you implement something to stave off farming as it stands today? I mean, it, it, uh, the. Uh, the I mean that, that that's been suggested. It's probably by far one of the the, the better suggestions, but I don't think it actually saw, solves the problem. I think if you put the farmer like farmers run away from fights, that's why they have the warp core stabs. If you again go back to like the shrinking war zone and concentrate like the activity, like you won't really have the the, the farmer problem sort of fixes itself because they either have to fight you or they they, they they're wasting they're, they're sitting there uh, just sitting there wasting their time um, and trying to make trying to make isk. So I think I think attacking, uh, not trying to, do, while everybody loves to kill farmers and wants to kill them, like basically um, doing something that more attacks uh, the the time they have to spend to uh, capture those plexes, uh, like the the time of rollback or something like that, is going to affect uh, their income, which is going to affect their interest in doing it. Yeah, like it's not going to be possible to entirely stop the the farming problem. It's going to move somewhere else in Eve if you nerf it totally. Like I don't know. All right, guys, uh, we're going to have to wrap it up real quick. But one of the things I really wanted to bring up before we do that is systems, uh, the value of systems in faction warfare since uh, things have changed in the game. Actually controlling a system in faction warfare doesn't really give you any benefits. Uh, what kind of benefits would you like to see for system control? I mean, there are all kinds of suggestions out there. What, uh, what would you suggest? So this is actually my baby because occupancy warfare is kind of like one of the main things that I do faction warfare for. And I absolutely disagree that systems, that capturing a system doesn't have any value. Because when you're doing these major system grinds and you're attacking systems that are actually occupied, um, the distance between your home base and their home base and that reship time is massive in determining your success. So controlling strategic systems from a like topographical, cartographical sort of standpoint controlling choke point systems makes a massive difference in how well you're able to influence the war zone, influence control of the war zone. So even though there's not necessarily a in-game mechanic that makes those more valuable, um, they're still incredibly valuable from a practical standpoint when it comes to controlling the war zone and impacting the other side's ability to make progress. Right, of course. Uh, but would you, you wouldn't add any other sort of inherent uh, qualities in owning a system? I mean, I'd love to see situations where, you know, maybe the uh, the NPCs and the plexes are more tough because you've upgraded the system. Uh, there's yeah. a system in Faction Warfare where you can donate LP to the infrastructure hub in a system, and it improves the quality of it, but it doesn't really have an impact right now because a lot of the impacts it used to have in terms of clone costs, repair costs, and, and manufacturing costs don't really matter anymore with the new systems that have been put in place. Um, but I th also think that that could be really, really abused because the defensive advantage in a occupied system is so high as it is that if you add additional defensive advantages, uh, whether that is in terms of like uh, bonuses to your ships or bonuses to LP or bonuses to plexes, it makes it even harder for someone to, to, to make a dent. And it actually causes more, more zone stagnation in my view. Uh, I kind of like the different systems have different values. Or like, do you have some difference of like mission systems are way more valuable than the the normal station systems, and you have the, like the the non-station systems that are pretty much essentially useless at the moment. It's like I I like it creates like a dynamic, and I want to like see more of that stuff. Like, you own a system is more worth or some shit like that. 
Right. Right. But the question is, how do you implement in, that in a situ in a way that's not going to be massively unbalanced? Because you know, for on the Galenta side, we own like five systems that have Caldari agents, but we're not owning them because they have Caldari agents. We we're owning them because of their strategic and value on a uh, on like a, a a map basis in terms of how it allows us to control flow of people through the war zone. Yeah, that's I like that thing. Like you have the uh, you own their systems. Like they can't run missions as effectively as they can because you own the systems because they have a bigger value. Okay, guys, we're gonna have to wrap it up. I know Marcel has to leave. He's selling stuff apparently. <laughs> so, uh, any closing thoughts from any of you before we go to shout outs? I just wanted to say thank you all for having me on and uh, GMBA for the win. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go do some shout outs. Uh, Vesk, why don't you start us off, please? Sure, just want to give a shout out to uh, Ex Galentius, who's on a break. He's the uh, Galente Jesus, saved Huola, and uh, has had a massive <laughs> impact on. The entire Caldari Glinty War Zone. Glinty Jesus, I'm telling him that. Wait, wait, wait a minute. How many people are going to be uh, um, the 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 savior of that um, of that system? Just XG. Uh, just XG, of course. Uh, Marcel, you want to go with some shout outs, please? I'll just give a shout out to my my corp and uh, and thanks and thanks guys for letting me uh, for having me on. No. April, if you got any. Nothing. This computer is currently exploding, so we should probably. Oh yeah, uh, you guys should know that are watching the stream that that uh, Apos computer is literally burning up right now. So that's what we're gonna have to shut down. <laughs> what his uh, fans died or something? Yeah, one of his yes. fans. Yes. He's such an amateur. This is horrible. Uh, liquid cooling. Yeah, liquid cooling, man. Uh, Jules, you want to do some shoutouts, man? Well, I already think I already did mine, but yeah, thank you very much for having us on. It was great fun, and uh, hopefully we can do it again next week. Every week, facts and for a week. Uh, Gorski, go ahead, shout-outs. Uh, yeah, like, um, you should watch my stream at HKarn, where I stream Faction Wolf Missions. It's very fun, I promise. Uh, <laughs> some shout-outs to Pharah Boys and uh, Anime Masters, the best anime corp in EVE. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Every stream viewer for Gorski Car gets a free popsicle. Yeah, possible for everyone. <laughs> Confirm. <laughs> all right. Piglin, right? So, first of all, I'd like to shout out uh, our, yeah, our long time sponsors now, uh, Evebet. Uh, first of all, fantastic people. Uh, when you go to Evebet, spend some money. You're not just wasting money. These people actually reinvest into the community quite a bit, I'll tell you that. Uh, they are our only sponsor for Crossing Zebras. They pay, I mean, virtually the money that comes in from eBet pays for all the great content you see at Crossing Zebras. So just get on there, uh, bet on something, have some fun. It's a really great time. Uh, shout outs as well to uh, GMB, of course. And uh, shout out to uh, the Kaldari militia who <laughs> complained that we had only uh, Galmel on here. I'm really sorry about that. Standard globing. I want to give a shout out to uh, Nikolai Agnon from uh, Dirt and Glitter, who wrote a really nice uh, mail to me about uh, about his views from the Amar uh, side of, of, of Faction Warfare. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring up, I mean, I think we covered most of his points. I, I think we couldn't bring all of them, but a shout out to him as well. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Hey, Poster, can, we, can you even speak? No, he can't speak. He's already, he has to skip me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it, guys. That's it for today. I'm sorry we didn't have any more time. Uh, I'm kind of curious if Apoth is going to be sh able to shut down the stream even. Well, uh, we could always... We just unplug the computer. 